Podcast 31, Week 33. Welcome to the podcast, Your Pregnancy Week by Week. This podcast covers the 40 weeks of pregnancy in 38 segments and is based on the book, Your Pregnancy Week by Week, by Dr. Glade Curtis, MD, and me, Judith Schuler, MS. The information in our books and podcasts is a general informative guide about pregnancy. None of the information we provide is intended to replace, countermand, or conflict with the advice given to you by your own doctor. Always follow his or her advice. Use the information you learn here as a starting place in your dialogue to help you put your pregnancy concerns, questions, or interests into words. The goal of every pregnancy is a healthy mom and a healthy baby. To that end, our podcasts cover many topics. In each weekly podcast, we'll highlight information contained in the same weekly discussion in our book. We suggest you read each weekly chapter to learn further information, such as how baby is growing and changing and how you're growing and changing too. Our book also contains illustrations of changes in baby or you, advice for dads, charts, lists, boxes, an exercise for every week, a comprehensive glossary, hints, tips, snippets, and blurbs we just can't reproduce in a podcast. So let's get started on this week's discussion. We're going to look at week 33. Have you heard about placental abruption? It's premature separation of the placenta from the uterine wall. Normally, the placenta doesn't separate from the uterus until after baby is delivered. With placental abruption, it separates before birth, which can cause serious problems. Symptoms of placental abruption can vary. You may have heavy bleeding from the vagina, or you may experience no bleeding at all. Other symptoms can include lower back pain, tenderness of the uterus or abdomen, and contractions or tightening of the uterus. Ultrasound may help diagnose the problem, but doesn't always provide an exact diagnosis. Treatment varies. With heavy bleeding, delivery of the baby may be necessary. When bleeding is not heavy, the problem may be treated more cautiously. Placental abruption is one of the most serious problems in the second and third trimesters. If you have any symptoms, call your doctor immediately. About 2% of all pregnant women develop sleep apnea during pregnancy. This means airways narrow and you stop breathing briefly, then resume normal breathing. This can occur up to 100 times a night, which really can disturb your sleep. Sleep apnea has been linked to high blood pressure, gestational diabetes, fatigue, and cardiovascular problems in a mom-to-be. Some women are at higher risk for developing preeclampsia. It can also negatively affect baby's growth and development. Some women need a CPAP, continuous positive airway pressure machine, to breathe more healthfully during sleep. The good news is the problem often disappears after baby is born. Membranes around the baby that contain the amniotic fluid are called the bag of waters. Your water doesn't usually break until just before labor begins, when labor begins, or during labor. Premature rupture of membranes, P-R-O-M, occurs when membranes rupture earlier in pregnancy. If ruptured membranes aren't detected and treated within 24 hours, infection and other serious complications may occur. An infection could be harmful to baby. If you think your water has broken, call your doctor immediately. Don't stop eating or start skipping meals as your weight increases. You and baby need the calories and nutrition you receive from a healthy diet. It may be difficult to stay on your healthy eating plan as you get closer to delivery, but it may pay off with less heartburn and indigestion. Have you heard of biotin, also called vitamin H or vitamin B7? The fetus requires large amounts of it for growth. But studies show nearly half of all pregnant women may not have enough biotin to meet baby's needs. Symptoms of a deficiency include dry skin, brittle nails, muscle pain, anemia, 
hair loss, fatigue, and nausea. Because many of these symptoms are common to pregnancy without a biotin deficiency, if you have any of them, don't panic. Ask your doctor about it at a prenatal visit. We have mentioned whooping cough in a previous podcast, but let's look at it more closely. In the last 20 years, the incidence of whooping cough, also called pertussis, has increased. The disease produces a nagging cough that can last a long time. Nearly everyone has been vaccinated with the Tdap vaccine, tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis, but immunity decreases over time. If it's been two years since your last tetanus shot, think about getting a booster now. Whooping cough begins as a cold with a mild cough, then intense coughing begins, which may be followed by vomiting. The disease can last up to eight weeks, and you may cough for months afterwards. If you have any symptoms of whooping cough, call your doctor immediately. The faster the infection is treated, the sooner you'll feel better. And get that tetanus shot. Be sure you and anyone else who will be around baby is up to date on the vaccine. It's the only way to protect baby against whooping cough until he or she can be fully vaccinated around two months of age. Will you have an episiotomy? It's an incision made in the tissue between the vaginal opening and the anus during childbirth to help deliver baby. The procedure was once a routine part of childbirth, but that's no longer the case. Many doctors today let tissue between the vagina and rectum tear naturally during childbirth. Sometimes an episiotomy is needed, such as when baby's shoulder is stuck behind your pelvic bone, when baby has an abnormal heart rate during delivery, or when forceps or vacuum extraction is necessary. The controlled straight cut of an episiotomy can help avoid tearing vaginal tissue. Benefits after birth can include less relaxation of pelvic organs, less chance of incontinence, and less likelihood of sexual dysfunction. Benefits to a baby may include a more rapid delivery. Prenatal perineal massage started after 34 weeks of pregnancy may reduce the need for an episiotomy. It may also reduce pain after childbirth. It's most helpful for first-time moms. If you're interested, discuss it with your doctor. Episiotomy recovery can be uncomfortable and infection is possible. Call your doctor if pain gets worse, you develop a fever, or you notice a pus-like discharge. All could be symptoms of an infection. Do you live in an area that has ticks? If you do, you may be at high risk of getting Lyme disease. We know Lyme disease can cross the placenta, but we don't know how that may affect baby. Treatment for you requires long-term antibiotic therapy. Many medications used to treat Lyme disease are safe to use during pregnancy. If you get bitten by a tick, Call your doctor immediately. He or she will set out a plan of action for you. Remember, our podcasts give you the highlights of what may be happening in any given week. Check our book, Your Pregnancy Week by Week, for more detailed information. You may also want to check out our book for partners, Your Pregnancy for the Father-to-Be. It covers pregnancy from a man's point of view and provides lots of valuable information a man may find very useful. If you want to find out more about our podcast, visit our website, yourpregnancyweekbyweek.com. If you're looking for something specific, check out the podcast topics list. It details topics covered in each podcast, so you can listen to a particular podcast or read a certain chapter week if you want more information, or if you want to check out something you missed or a topic we haven't covered yet.